All right, so before we go any further, let's quickly talk about state in general. This concept of state is not something that is unique to React. So stepping away from React, pretty much any web application that we could develop, there's going to be some form of state that needs to be managed or kept track of. Now the patterns that we use to actually do that differ from framework to framework. We're not always following the exact same patterns, but the idea is the same. There's some data, some information that is liable to change, and we want to keep track of that somewhere. So for example, we have an application where some logged in users see something different compared to logged out users, or an app where you can click an edit button and it opens up a pop-up. We need to keep track of if the pop-up is open or closed. Simple things like that. Uh, same thing as accordions on a website. You're clicking, you know, expand or collapse, read more, that sort of thing. We're keeping track of if it's being displayed, if it's open or closed. Those are dynamic elements. It doesn't necessarily have to do with the server, right? The, the back end of an application doesn't care if the modal is open or closed or if you uh, have expanded or collapsed an accordion but we need to keep track of that. So state is not always tied directly to what's happening on the server side. So as we've discussed, state is designed to constantly change, maybe not constantly, but state changes. So whether that's something like a, a game, like chess, for example, we have a, a board that we would model. Look at this, this is a magical moving image. I don't know how I did that, it's very complicated. So if we were modeling this chess game, uh, creating an interactive game in the browser, we need to keep track of the current board state. We need a way of knowing where all the pieces are at any given point, and those are definitely going to change as the application progresses or as the game progresses. So every new move here is going to represent a single state change. So each time one of these pieces moves somewhere else, at the very least, we're updating one part of the state, and potentially one of these pieces could be taken in a move, right? Captured, I guess is the right term. Then we need to update another part of the state that says, hey, this piece is no longer on the board. State tracks a bunch of things, but we can break it down really into two categories. The first is UI logic, user interface stuff. So things like, is the modal open? Right now I'm editing a profile. Or is the read more button uh, or the accordion expanded or closed? But then also, there's the whole business logic side of things, the changing state of the data itself, uh, new notifications in your inbox, messages, things that have been read or unread. All of this business logic affects how things are displayed, what a user sees. And in the past, with things like jQuery or just even vanilla JavaScript, the way a lot of people uh, would approach sort of managing state, keeping track of things, is basically to use the DOM, use the elements on the page as your source of truth. So for example, let's say there's a form with a single input called first name input. If we wanted to know the state of the application if using this pattern, using jQuery, we select that input and then we call dot val to get the current value. So this is how we figure out the current value of a piece of data on the form. So we're inferring the state of the application from whatever is currently being displayed or what's on the page, what's in the DOM. In React, we actually do the exact opposite. So we'll see that in the next video, we'll finally write some code that references state.